How's it going everyone? Electro Pikachu here. Ever since about the time Super came out, I started getting into Dragon Ball. And I'm pretty glad about it. There's a lot of really cool things. The fights, the powers, the transformations. So I decided to dip my toes into a bit of Dragon Ball content. This is my top 10 Dragon Ball transformations. Sir, this is the opinion police! Ah! Get on the ground, now! <laughs> Stay in solar all suits! <laughs> We swear we're gonna have a better, we swear we're gonna have a better setup for this. Yeah, this was extreme, this, this, like this was improvised. So yeah, uh, I'm here too. If you do not know me, you live under a rock. I am Gojo the Eveltuber. They would live under a, if they lived under a rock. They'd probably know you though. If they if you've been on this if you've been on this channel before, you might have seen him. However, this is the first of probably many collaborations between hopefully hopefully between quite a few of us. So, we decided that we were going to make something that normally I don't do on my channel. I've done top tens before, but I've never done Dragon Ball content. He's recently gotten into Dragon Ball. Both of us and, are relatively new. And by that, I mean I watch DBZ and Super Broly. And play fighters. Yeah. <laughs> so, what we decided to do is we were going to go through our top ten favorite Dragon Ball forms. This includes forms from Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball Super, even Dragon Ball GT. And we've compiled a list of our own personal ones, but... And while we'll be going between each of those, both giving our own opinions as to which forms made our personal top tens and why... Eventually, we will, at around the second half of this video, make a compromise between our two forms and give you a sort of... Because I think it would be fun if we both shared our personal lists. Well, because it would be fun if we shared both our personal lists and one that we made together in order to find, like, a medium. Yeah. So, let's get started. Also, just a quick disclaimer, there will be manga forms in this video. That is true. There will be manga spoilers in this video. So if you haven't read the Dragon Ball Super manga... We will have, like... Yeah, if you haven't read the manga, we'll have, like, a timestamp for when we skip that entry. If you don't care about spoilers, you just build different. And if there's no timestamp, that's my fault. Let's get into it. All right. Number ten. You want to go first, or should I? Uh, you're the guest. You go first. All right. My number ten is Final Form Cooler. Which... When you compare it to the final form of the Frieza race, such as, which is, you know, Frieza and Cooler. And yeah, the monkeys. There, it's extremely minimalistic. It's very... You wouldn't really imagine that there's something beyond that, because, I mean, that's their purest state in the manga. Like, the rest of the forms are artificial. Those are suppressed. It's not like traditional transformations would make you more powerful. The Frieza race transformations make you weaker. Unless of the final form, but in but final form, but the fifth form it doesn't follow that. It actually makes you more powerful instead of suppressing you, and that makes it unique amongst the Frieza race. Not only that, but final form is but the fifth form is kind of coolest thing, and it looks cool. I mean, it you can't really get more minimalistic than Cooler and Frieza's fourth form. So, the design makes it similar. And also, just in general, the cooler movie. When, like, just imagine as a child, you're watching Goku fight Frieza's brother. You know he's a Super Saiyan at this point, And you realize that he's still, that Super Saiyan beat fourth form Frieza pretty hard. And you're like, all Goku needs to do is go Super Saiyan. But then Cooler tells you, there's a form beyond the final form, and you're just like, are you freaking serious? And that, like, increases the stakes and tension. And it also kind of helps glorify Super Saiyan at that point when it was still very fresh. 
and kind of diminishes final form cooler as well. But that's besides the point. But final form cooler, just in general, in my opinion, cuts a really interesting silhouette, especially compared to a final form, fourth form cooler in Frieza, which look extremely similar. If you told me that, like, if I wasn't, if I was a Dragon Ball newbie and you told me that final, if that fourth form cooler was just an older Frieza, I would have believed you. But fifth form cooler helps differentiate him from his brother in a different state. Not to mention. Not to mention, looks like freaking Shredder's helmet. Like, that looks cool. Alright, moving on to my number 10. Super Saiyan Rage. You're gonna get the gun. Yeah, that's what I'm expecting. I expect my entire list to probably make quite a few people mad. But I want you to hear me out on this one. So, Super Saiyan Rage is an ascended form of Super Saiyan 2. <clears throat> where it appears because, supposedly because of being exposed to God Key. Not enough for one to turn into Super Saiyan God or even Super Saiyan Blue, but enough for there to be a difference. This is a form specific to my personal favorite character, Future Trunks. During a arc of the super anime... Trunks is cool, fuck you, he has a sword! During a portion of the super anime, which I haven't completely finished, but I have seen enough of it to know about Super Saiyan Rage. If you're going to complain about his opinions, mine are even more invalid, because I've only watched DBZA and Super Broly. I've at least read the manga of Z, seen most of Super, and most of the I only of finished the Saiyan saga in the manga. Anyways. You can so, point the gun at anyone, point it at me. Anyways, as I was saying, <laughs> it belongs to my personal favorite character, so there is a little bit of bias. I also love what I've seen of the Goku Black saga. I believe that it was a good form for... The, for its time. It wasn't essentially giving Trunks Super Saiyan God immediately. We had to wait until Super Dragon Ball Heroes for that. But it was a halfway point. And I think it's interesting that there is a halfway point. You don't immediately go to God. You can have a bit of God key in a form before you go full God or full blue. I think it works on this is also why I like Super Full Power Saiyan 4 Limit Breaker, which is I not... It's actually, I think Full Power is like just, you know, 4 and Full Swing, not just like unique 4. It's, it's like 100% Frieza. Yeah, but Limit Breaker is its own thing. Yeah, Limit Breaker is more like I will say stacking li Super Saiyan 4 with God Key, so that's more Super Saiyan God 4. Yeah, but that's not the point. That's just... Again, why I like Super Saiyan Rage. Because of the fact that it's Super Saiyan 2, but with a little bit of God Key in there. Now, the reason why it's on number 10 instead of higher on the list, despite the fact it belongs to my favorite Super Saiyan character, is because it shows up out of nowhere. There's no build-up to it. And while I like the form, even I can admit that if there was more build-up to it, it would be a lot more liked. It's like Instead Blue Evolution. Like, I like Blue Evolution. If if this was a, a top 12, like, team TFS, Blue Evolution would have been my number 11. I, that's just, I just call it Super Vegeta Blue. Very fair. But yeah, if there was a little more build-up, I would probably let, I probably would have put it higher on the list. And I'm sure it would probably be higher on a lot of people's lists. But for now, it'll have to remain at number 10. Moving on to number nine, I guess I'll start off with this one. This is my spot for Final Form Cooler. Now, I have a specific way of seeing Cooler. Mine is on the same side of how he saw Cooler, but I want you to picture what I saw. I was just getting into Dragon Ball. I had seen a lot of clips of GT, I had been watching through 
all of Z abridged, and I was even trying to find a way to look through the manga. I was going through Z abridged, and then I found out there's movies, which kind of surprised me. It's not normal that you see movies of web series. So, and I didn't even know that Dragon Ball Z had movies other than Battle of Gods. Movies in the loosest terms. Those things barely reached an hour. Other than Battle of Gods, I hadn't seen any other ones. And the only reason I knew Battle of Gods existed was because on a Black Friday, I ended up finding one of the DVDs. So I ended up looking through the list of DBZ abridged movies. And there was a specific one that caught my eye. After watching Broly, of course. I had, I had to see Broly. It was the newest one at the time. When Broly? But the one that caught my eye was Revenge of Cooler. Now, I liked Frieza as a villain. Not even just in Dragon Ball Z Abridged. I had seen some of Frieza in regular Dragon Ball Z at that time. And I really liked Frieza. Frieza was a good villain. So... You can imagine my surprise when I saw that there was another guy who looked like Frieza, but yet there was also some slight changes to him. And then I end up watching the movie. It's funny. TFS did a good job. But then I find out that he's got a form beyond what I thought at the time was his final form. And his f actual final form was this big, muscular guy, face mask, full spiky Be like head We're your master in quarantine. And then he just starts destroying Goku, who, at the time, I was like, okay, this guy's probably the strongest anime character, right? I mean, I've seen some of his fights. He goes against some crazy stuff. And even, like, in the Super Saiyan stuff, he would, he beat Frieza, who was supposed to be, like, the big bad at that time. I had no clue Cell existed, of course. And then I just see Cooler destroying Goku in this form that's beyond what I thought was the final form. <clears throat> I had to like it. Also, to explain his experiences before I get to my number nine... My first real interaction with Cooler was in Xenoverse 2, in the first time you encounter Cooler in the final part of the Namek Saga when you fight Frieza and Super Saiyan Goku. And if you have played Xenoverse 2, you know what fight I'm talking about. The fight that yeah. you have with, Go with Super Saiyan Goku and your time patrol character and Frieza and Cooler is brutal. That fight is hard. Especially at the point you are where you have, where you have very limited stats, you're not you're not you know one shotting people with your ultimates eighty percent of the time. You you don't even have a, unless you're a Saiyan, which I wasn't. I, played, I was. Yeah, you had Super Saiyan at that time. I had Super. Sa I I went out of my way to get Super Saiyan. <laughs> yeah, I was Frieza race, so I I wasn't gonna get I wasn't getting the golden form until way later. Yeah, so he had some trouble. I struggled. Why? I struggled Don't for they like, have fifth form as its own thing in that game, though? Hmm, wish I could tell you. Questions for later. Yeah. On to your no number nine. Um, my number nine is Super Saiyan Rose. And, like... We are counting it as something different from Super Saiyan Blue. Because yes, it is. Yes, they're both Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. Dumb name. Yes. Anyone would agree that, even people who like the form. SSGSS, -S -S -S. or just say blue. Actually, in the manga, there's a joke about why they that why they call they it blue. They did it because he bit, Goku yeah. was trying to say it and then bit his tongue. Yeah, so there's like, we'll, we'll just call it blue. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, continue but, with Rose. Uh, uh, Rose was a relatively interesting choice. It's. Like, Goku Black is one of the most recognizable villains in Dragon Ball, and he's extremely new. He's already become extremely popular. And Rose was his unique thing. I would argue every villain needs like their own thing. You know, Frieza's got his golden form now. Uh, 
there's Cell, who's perfect. Cell with a jaw, with a with a face gifted from Jesus. And there's Broly. We'll get to him. Trust me. We will. Uh, in two occasions. Yeah. And then there's like Majin Boo, who goes from fat to super to kid Boo. And then, and then you have Goku Black, which I love we that are. Boo just beats his chest yeah. <laughs> like a monkey. <laughs> he did. He tried to return to monkey, but oh, trust me, we'll get to monkey later. We'll get to monkey. Yeah, but Goku Black, we already had an evil Goku at this point in Turles. Kind of. Well, you know, he looked like Goku. Yeah, he did. That was a real. That was really the first time. That's like saying Bardock was also a Goku. He is a Goku, though. He's Goku's dad. Okay, he's Goku in sweat. He is up. a better Goku. Yes. Yeah, that's right. I said it. Bardock is better. Bardock's cool. Oh, continue with Rose. He's got, he's got sweatpants, Saiyan armor, and a bandana that Rose is Day. red, <laughs> soaked in the blood of his fallen comrades. Except for in Super. Shut up. Z Bardock's better. Continue with the Broly. Okay. Not Broly. Continue with Bro Goku. Already. Okay, so rosé, and I also really like the color. Uh, this is ironic coming from me because I wouldn't think to like that. Would you say that's red or purple? Pink? It's pink. Yeah, I'm that's not why really it's called rosé. Rosé is another word for pink. It's like it's like a reddish pink. Yeah, but like pink is a really <coughs> hard. I'm not just saying this because haha, ha, pink. But no, it's like I just think it's a really hard color to get right and and make make it look menacing in a way. If that makes sense. Yeah, to be fair, it's not exactly like you can make pink a menacing color. Or at least not normally. <laughs> I mean, we saw that in Super. Yeah. <laughs> we saw that in Dragon in Z with Boo. Eh, Boo is okay. Rosé is really the, like, pink form that, like, yeah. actually can get you concerned but for the well-being of the, your main characters. Not to mention, Goku Black is just a character was unique. And it was good to, like, se and that just further separates him from, well, Turles. Like, th the more separated Turles and Black are, the better, in my opinion. So... I think the main separation there is at least Goku Black's canon. Fair enough. But... Turles doesn't even turn Super Saiyan! Doesn't he have, like, legendary evil Saiyan or, like, evil powers and heroes? But, but whatever. Yeah, that's Let's just try to get turning back into Raditz. Yeah, it, it is, though. Ugh. Anyways, back to the list. Number eight. But, yeah, rosé. It just, okay, it's got a unique, it's, it's got a unique color. It's, it just helps make Goku Black feel more interesting. And, and also, it's like the first real idea that Goku Black is not what he seems. He's not just a Goku that went rogue. How do you like your Goku Black sounding British when he turns rosé? Stupid British. Ruining everything. But like, and, but like, because if you've watched Super, you'd know that rosé happens when a Kai, uh, uh, like some, and a Saiyan are like the same being. It's like, if a Saiyan goes down. It's a Saiyan with, Ka with Kaioshin DNA. I was thinking, for some reason, that was like Kaioshin powers, and that I was thinking could go on. Kaioshin not... powers, Kaioshin DNA. Same. Could have Somewhat. is like ultimate like Kyo Kaioshin powers. No, no, it's just potential unleashed. Because I was thinking, imagine if that like they gave Gohan Kaioshin powers. He could have gotten Rose. Would have been cool. Oh, Trunks and the manga with Kaioshin. Anyways, Trunks so yeah, manga has I don't really got much powers, reason like, for, I don't really got much reason to like Rosé. I which just is think, why it's this low on the list, to be fair. Yeah. But I think next up is going to be m number eight, which is for, now we're here. <laughs> which is, yeah, now we at Broly. Uh, we got Legendary Super Saiyan. Which can be translated as man big. He big. He he do be big though. That at least is for your list, which Yeah, Legendary Super Saiyan is, in my opinion, one of the most striking and recognizable forms in the series. It also came at a time when Super Saiyan was for one still relatively fresh, but 
most of the characters that were saying had it at this point. Yeah. We weren't reaching bargain sale bin levels like we are at now. Goten playing in his backyard suddenly turns golden haired. Chi Chi gets upset. Ugh. Trunks at least got it in a good way. He trained with his dad. Yeah. Like, just, could you just, like, imagine if he was, like, trying to, he pushed like himself. I like how Goten, but I really like how Goten gets Super it's, Saiyan. It's from funny, but it's not good. It's funny, but it's not good. Just like Majin Buu. <laughs> you don't like Buu. I don't like the Buu saga. No, I do not. Anyways, but yeah, Legendary Super Saiyan, and even when, like, we see it, it's, you're just like, if, again, picturing this, is that, imagine you're a kid who's seeing, who's watching Broly the Legendary Super Saiyan, like, who is this guy on the cover, this big buff dude in why the center? Why is he green? Yeah. That's new. Why is he, yeah, like, yeah, why is he green? And, Did someone throw you know, up in his hair? <laughs> but then you meet the guy called Broly, and you're like, this guy is scrawny, and he's not really, but yeah, compared to the, the, the team at this point, the Z Fighters, he was pretty... He was on the shrimpy side. But then we see him, like, snap at the climax of the... At, like... And he just... His body literally bursts apart. Because, like, it can't handle the energy. Yeah. And then, like, the whole dimension with the colors just going, like, wah, wah, wah. Like, that's, like... The second you saw, like, you knew it, it was about to go down. Mm -hmm. And then you just see him standing in the center, and you got, like, Pantera going off in the background. And as you just hear him screaming, and, like, immediately, like, Broly makes you fear for your, for the hero's life. And, like, Goku's just like, Gohan, get out of here now. No words now, only screams. Broly does not say a word. Well, Except like, for Kakarot. Actually, and Kakarot. Kakarot. No, the, Kakarot, no, that's Kakarot, second Kakarot. coming. You're thinking of second coming. And in Legendary, in the fight, he actually talks. How am I ahead. thinking of second coming? Because second coming's garbage. Which is why no one should think of it. Yeah. Like, all the Kakarot memes happen because of second coming. Continue. But yeah. And then Broly just, literally just like, goes forward with his arms out, and that's what he does. That's his fighting style. He just... Clothes lines. He just clothes lines everybody. He is running. He's running through everyone like a freight train. And it is. I know some people aren't fond of Legendary Super Saiyan because it's overly excessive. And. I mean, to be it, fair, they did use Broly a lot in Z. He. I mean, he was cool. He was something. He's cool. But yeah. His movies aren't. Well, aside from the first one. The first one's okay. If Broly was, uh, here's the, if Broly was a one-off villain, he, if Z Broly specifically was a one-off villain, he would have been better off. Yeah, but then they brought him back in Second Coming, which they were has like, a good scene, but it's stupid how it happens. Yeah, like yeah, we're talking about the family coming out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought that happened in like the Metal Core movie or something. So. No, I'm Goten so didn't exist. Yeah, we can talk about like different moments in Dragon Ball some other time. Right now, it's just transformations. But, yeah. And then Legendary Super Saiyan. Like, I like both sides of the spectrum. I like overly minim... I like minimalistic designs like Frieza, Final Form, and then stuff like insanely excessive like Legendary Super Saiyan. And it's like, his biceps got biceps. And it's... He just... Again, like, he just powers through everything and you're just like, no one can beat this guy. They're literally just like, that didn't work, try this, okay, that didn't work. Like, I think TFS said it best, like, Goku's just like, is this the worst or what? And yeah. everyone's just like, yeah, this was, this was painful. And... If you thought Cell was bad... If you thought Cell was bad... Broly was, was bad. <laughs> Broly was badder. But, yeah, Z Broly was just insanely... in horrifying and he has some of like the scariest lines in the in the movie there's like one where he's like hey Kakarot how much do you love your son as he's about to try and kill Gohan which think about that Gohan almost died the Seven? character who not until Resurrection F 
died. Like, yeah. Go on. Unless we're counting the future stuff. Go on. Got out of fighting Cell better than fighting Broly. He got Go out of Cell. Got out of fighting Majin Buu better than fighting Broly. And that's just in Z. We I'm, surp get to I'm super. surprised Gohan didn't Ooh. have like. I'm surprised Gohan didn't have like brain damage from that fight. Well, I mean, to be fair, it wasn't a canon movie, so. Some people argue that Z Broly could have. It, it is. It is Not easily. Anymore. It or yeah. Well, at the time, people were doing like it could have worked, very just barely. Barely, just barely. Yeah, but now, but now no. Super Broly's here, and he is so much better. Yeah, just as a character, but, like, the C Broly just has, like, this savagery. Yeah, when you think of Legendary Super Saiyan, you definitely think of Z Broly more than Super. When you just think of Broly, people think of Z Broly now. Th think of Z Broly. It's not like... I mean, yeah. Not to discredit DBS Broly, he's 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 a, he's a way better character, I'm gonna be honest. But he you. also hasn't been utilized much. He got his movie, and then he, we the haven't seen good. it. Since. The but, movie's great. Yeah. It's one of the best anime movies. But, like... In that form, they never mention how he's the Saiyan of legend, and, um, but yeah, that's why he's just unique. And also, in DBS, they never really call him the Saiyan of legend. Like, it's just kind of implied. It wasn't, the, but then- To they, be fair, he doesn't show up as the legendary Super Saiyan. Until, like, the very Gogeta. end in the fight with Gogeta. Until yeah. then, his hair is yellow. Well, but it only his turns... hair is black for most of the movie. Well, then it goes yellow. Yeah, but in like the final act, then it's green. Yeah, and at that point in like Xenoverse Two, it's called Full Power Super Saiyan. I'm just like, it's legendary Super Saiyan, but the fact it just kind of discredits DBS Broly, yeah. which I really like. I I liked him, but do we want? Do you want to mention Kale? No, I didn't think so. My turn. I actually don't remember what my number eight is. Did you write it down? Uh, no. Then I'm gonna need to pause this. Alright, whatever. Alright, you do that and then I'm gonna... I'll deal with it later. Uh, we'll cut out this section. Yeah. Alright, my number eight. Wrathful. Yep, we're talking about Broly again. <laughs> we'll be with Broly for a while. We'll be with him for a little bit. So. Both Broly's. My experience with Broly started with Dragon Ball Z abridged, as my experience with a lot of things Dragon Ball did. And DBZA was just really is just really accessible. Yeah, but then I found out that it was that Broly was getting another movie, and this time he was canon. Yeah, I was intrigued. Many people were confused. Because <laughs> Broly is a mixed bag. However, what we got in Broly was something unlike anything we had ever seen before. A story about a boy suffering from PTSD and asking the question if it was right to be upset about your upbringing. And then we got his first form. No, it wasn't Super Saiyan. We got Wrathful, where his eyes turn yellow. Yeah, which and is what his Super Saiyan Four, and his aura becomes green like that of Legendary Super Saiyan or Super Saiyan Berserk, with how Super calls it. And then you watch him take on Super Saiyan God Vegeta. And Super Saiyan God Goku. And he's actually winning. Yeah, that will put a good impression on you. Especially when you find out that Wrathful is him using the power of the, of the Great Ape in his base form. I think that's enough said about that form. Yeah. Until you start talking about in number in yeah. your number seven. Number seven we is wrathful for me. We might as well get you on wrathful since I just talked about it. Yeah, I like wrathful for similar reasons. I'm just like because it makes so sense. It makes so much sense. It's like it. It's genius. 
a way to use something to uh, something old and some in a way in a new and unique way. Like, oh yeah, we kind of moved away from the Ozuru because it was a bit of a nuisance, but. Well, what if we could use its power in our base forms, not having to deal with being a massive target? What if we could bring it in, but not have to draw the tail? Well, like, I think uh, that that goes into something I, I, I want to talk about once I get done with this. But the Kiritoriyama like, stuff, cutting corners. And being lazy. That's literally the reason Goku was blonde. And that's the reason why his tail got cut off. It wasn't... A didn't Isn't Toriyama Tori say she was bad at drawing tails? What? I think Toriyama said he was bad at drawing tails, like he didn't like it. Well, no, he said he, he didn't like it because it was always there and it was difficult to have to constantly draw it. But, yeah. That's why it's gone. <laughs> Wrathful is... It just makes so much sense, because it's not like Ozuru wasn't powerful. No, it was... It's not Super Saiyan levels of strength. But it was definitely something that when you saw it, you realized things were getting a bit serious. Yeah. I mean, Ozuru Kid Goku was like the strongest thing we knew of back then. Back in, well... Back in the 80s. Well, okay, you and I knew something stronger when we started yeah. getting into well, like, it. We I mean, didn't get imagine into like some Dragon Japanese Ball. kid watching kid, like, Ozuru Kid Goku. Like, that's the strongest thing in the series up to that point. Yeah, and it's also the there's also the fact that you know Ozaru Kid Goku killed his dad, not his dad, Grandpa Gohan, Grandpa Gohan, who was essentially his dad, and then we found out about Bardock. But yeah, I like Ralph for the same reasons he said, and also it's just it just works, and I'm just curious, can Broly go Ozaru? Can Broly go Wrathful? without his tail because he's a legendary Super Saiyan? And do you think other Saiyans would need their tails to do it? Some people think that Wrathful is something that any uh, Saiyan Maybe you need giving. the tail as a catalyst, and then once you unlock it, you can just do it whenever. Uh, I know there's some people who think that, like, any Saiyan would be able to learn it, and I mean, there is that one scene where Goku kind of looks like he tries to Yeah, but he it. has his tail. No, he doesn't. Not in Super. No, like, I'm talking about back tail. when he beats King Piccolo all the way back in OG Dragon Ball. Yeah, but he doesn't have Wrathful. <laughs> yeah, but, like, he still uses the power of the Great Ape. Eh, kind of. You see it in, like, the thing. You see, you see like, the essence of it. Yeah. That's, it's not really, it's not, we're not gonna I guess waste, it could technically be considered wrathful. We're not gonna waste time on my number seven when he already basically said everything for me. We're gonna move to his. Super Saiyan God. Should have been called Saiyan God. Okay, Lanny. Look, originally I didn't care much for the naming of it, but to be honest, it does make sense. It could have just been called Saiyan God. All that, all that changes is a slimmer design, which, honestly, for Goku, looks really nice. Also, Vegeta wears it wearing well in the Broly. Vegeta wears it really well. Red does something good. The red hair, while it doesn't really spike up or anything, it actually maintains the regular shape. And then, the slimmer features, as well as the fact that it increases speed, mostly. Yeah. That was an interesting thing to see. It's also very interesting that it's a form that you need a ritual to get to, rather than just being able to unlock it. Unless your name is Yamoshi or Shallot. No. Didn't? I haven't gotten that. Both one. of them, the only one that we never see use the ritual to get it is Vegeta. Yeah, how does Vegeta get it? We don't know. <laughs> we never see. I think ever. in the manga he just has it. Maybe, like, if you're exposed to it enough. Maybe. Like, someone who already has it. I mean, if he got blue, he probably had to get God. But, yeah. We never see Vegeta obtain God, and neither of them obtain blue. But Red does do something nice to those characters. Also, I don't get why people don't like how Trunks looks in Super Saiyan God. It looks nice. I think it looked fine. Some I've seen some people complaining about saying it's an abomination. How? Out of all the characters to get Super Saiyan God outside of Goku and Vegeta, 
it makes sense that Trunks would end up getting it. Personally, my favorite character to have, like, the Super Saiyan God design is Shallot. Because I've been playing through Dragon Ball Legends. And I mean, he's more tied to it than Goku and Vegeta are. But even then, it's still a cool form. And the fact it can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Beerus, a God of Destruction, or G.O.D., which is just... That's a, that's a good way to pull off a new form. Especially after w most people hadn't seen Dragon Ball since GT ended back in, like, the early 2000s. Yeah, what, it was 17 years since last time people saw Goku yeah. and his friends? Yeah, well, there was also the, yo, Son Goku. It, there was also the Tarble thing. Oh, yeah, Tarble. <laughs> Yeah, but, like, that was just, like, a weird gap, and it was more, it was, yeah. Number six. Wait, hang on. Wait, yeah. Uh, mine was, give me a sec, because I, I, I don't remember what my list was. Wasn't yours also Super Saiyan God? <laughs> yes, I actually think it was. That's why I'm having you go right after me again, instead of us switching yeah, between I like more. I like God as well. I think God cuts a unique silhouette. Red is my favorite color, so there's more brownie points for me. And it was also just an extremely unique form. It was just something... Again, it was something new. And... Something new that we hadn't seen since... Well, actually, yeah, that, that was probably the... Uh, for me, after uh, seeing clips of GT and then also uh, seeing Dragon Ball Z bridge stuff, the first thing I saw that was actually Dragon Ball, like, fully through, was Battle of Gods. Yeah, and it's like, like, God Goku is, was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Beerus at 70% of his power, quote-unquote. Reality was probably around 40%. We will, we'll never know. Yeah, unless, you know, we just... Uh, we find... Rematch? Super Saiyan Blue against Beerus? Fan mangas. Fan mangas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, yeah, God is a unique... For... It takes the, like, less is more to almost, I would say, its hardest extent that they designed with Dragon Ball. And... Like, did you hear, like, the original ideas for God, like, with him all buff? Oh, and, yeah. Like, him I buff, think that, he's got a cape. <laughs> not, like, a cape, like, the, I've seen some artwork of what people think it would have looked like. I think it looks I've seen the actual thing of what the guy said it was originally. He had a cape. <laughs> I'll look that up. It was extremely buff, had a cape flowing. It would be extremely over the top. The simplistic design is perfect. For Dragon Ball. Because good things come in small packages, as Toriyama has shown us. Vegeta, Frieza, Kid Boo. Well, eh, on Kid Boo. You just take any opportunity to rag on Boo. <laughs> I mean, Kid Boo's alright. I personally prefer Super Boo, but. Eh, the. I, I can talk good. about the Majin Buu saga some other time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. The Super Saiyan 3 hair would have been a big mistake. <laughs> I mean, it being red would have been interesting. Red Super Saiyan 3 hair. Hmm. hmm. But, yeah. Now, um, we're going to go to our number five. Heads up. This is a it's manga spoiler six. form. Wait, mm, number six. Oh, your number six. My bad. Yeah, it's, it's my number six, isn't it? Manga spoilers. If you haven't read the manga, leave. Well, okay, please don't leave. I need the views. Please. I need... We skip need, skip we need to the timestamp that I hope I will remember to put in. And if not, then uh, that's an oopsie. Ultra Ego. Or Mega Instinct if you're Spanish. Or super ego, if you want to be granola and be funny about it. Or if you're Tian and call it pure unadulterated ego. You know, that actually wouldn't have been a bad name. Pure ego? 
Pure Ego, yeah, that would have been a bad name. But okay. The manga has been going in a very interesting direction. We have Goku mastering Ultra Instinct. And then we've got Vegeta, who's just kind of been the butt of a joke for far too long. He's... He, the His most... Re Literally, they gave Goku Ultra Instinct Sign, which I love the way Sign looks. We'll uh, get to Ultra Instinct eventually. Yeah, uh, he will, not me. Please don't crucify me. But, um, but yeah, they gave Goku Ultra Instinct, but then they gave Vegeta just a sparkly blue version. A, a new blue, which sparkly, I do, I do like. Uh, yeah, like I said, I like blue dilution. Just they kind of they kind of shafted Vegeta there. They've been shafting Vegeta for years. He screwed up in the Cell Saga. Royally. Died no, in died in the Boo Saga, although honestly, that that's less of being screwed over. That was a good character ending, but he still dies. Got the kill of Frieza stolen from him. In Beerus in Battle of Gods makes Vegeta his bitch. I'm gonna have to censor a few things in this. Yeah, it's not that bad. Uh, Freeze the kill on Frieza gets taken from him when honestly we all he know should have been the one. We all know Vegeta should have taken that win. Frieza tormented Vegeta for years. Honestly, he probably should have been the original Super Saiyan God. In thinking about it, he was the one with the closest tie to Beerus. Yeah, his dad was so by extension him. Well, yeah, he saw Beerus. <laughs> yeah, still. Which honestly makes it better that in the manga, after also not being able to get away with the win against Moro, we get him training with Beerus. And if you paid attention, you know that something's gonna happen. Especially considering we know that Topo got something from oh, Belmont. Yeah. Shoot, him fighting Topo actually works as foreshadowing. Actually, that's foreshadowing as far as Blue Evolution, where he's like, I'll shatter my limits on my own way and on my own terms. I will blaze my own path. And I think it makes sense that... He's no longer trying to surpass Goku by just he's going doing his, own his, way. his way better. He's like, I'm actually going to try doing my own thing. And try he does. Learns Hakai from Mr. Catman himself. And then we get them fighting Granola. And we start with Goku, which that's yep. normally not what we do. We start with Vegeta and then we get Goku. So, interesting subversion there, but we got that in Moro. So, we just had to see where, he, where it was going with this. Master of Ultra Instinct gets beaten. I actually think it's Super Saiyan God stacked with Mastered Ultra Instinct. Not not after a while. He ends up going to blue, and then he gets to Mastered, and then he gets taken down. After the fact that, according to Miris, he was supposed Miris? to... Miris? Miris, yeah. According to Miris... Miris, I think it was. Either We're way. talking about the angel. Yeah, former angel. Like we said, Again, spoilers. spoilers. <laughs> Mastered Ultra Instinct gets taken down, as I said. And so Vegeta jumps in. And we see him acting more like he does in the Z. Back in the Saiyan saga. And then we get to see the fruits of his training. It is a little bit weird because he says that he's already gotten this power, but we never see him use it until now. But he did learn it from... Beerus. Maybe I just read it wrong. But we see him lose his eyebrows, which interesting design choice, but it works better than it does in Super Saiyan 3, in my personal opinion. And then Super either, Saiyan 3 would have been my number 12. And then either his hair becomes black, or, well, it stays black, or it becomes purple. Either way, both look good. And we see him just completely destroying Granola. And this is Granola at full power. 
or at least what he knows to be his full power. And we also learn that, honestly, he has an, he now has an ability that fits Saiyans perfectly. Saiyans have always been in love with battle. Saiyans always get damaged a lot. The Zenkais come in and give them a lot more power based on how close to death they are. And then, we find out now with Ultra Ego, Vegeta gains the ability to get more power the more damage he's been given. Which honestly is where I think the ego part comes in. He's like, I don't care if I'm two seconds from dying, I'm you gonna kill you You think that's where the ego part comes in and not just from Vegeta I think that's where the form... Well, I think that... Well, fair enough. Super <laughs> Vegeta should have been called just Super Ego. Super Ego Vegeta. Yes. Take but that, yeah. Android Saga Vegeta fanboys. Honestly, I feel like this is a way that Vegeta will surpass Goku in, like, terms of raw power. Because think about this. He gains more power the more damage he takes. And then once he gets healed back up, he gains a Zenkai on top of that. That's... His key is technically limitless at that point. His key is actually limitless. The form genuinely has no limits. Even if he looks like he's getting tired, he can still technically keep going. Always have some senzu beans on him, I guess. Not even that. He, he just won't stop. Was like, I, Too I much I, pride fuel in the vein, in, pumping through the veins. His, his veins don't pump blood, they pump pride. <laughs> I was gonna make a joke there. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cut that there. Move on to yours. Okay, uh, my num I, we're actually on to number five now, I believe. Halfway. I think we're on your number five? Yeah. yeah. Mine's also Ultra Ego. Don't worry, this is the last repeat. For, for a while. Yeah, for a little bit. We have some similar forms, but they're not anywhere near each other anymore. Yeah, I like Ultra Ego. I remember thinking, like, I like Ultra Instinct. Specifically, sign. Not a fan of the not a fan of the silver hair on you, Master Ultra Instinct Goku. I just don't think it works. Like when I think of Ultra Instinct, I think of sign. I don't blame you. And like as and but then in comes Ultra Ultra Ego Vegeta, and I'm just I knew for I thought I had a feeling. Shoot, is there a Master Ultra Ego? Hmm. Or has he already mastered it? I'm reading the manga, I guess. I've been reading the manga. I don't know. What well, we don't know. Also, Read the manga for yourselves! Yes, don't use us. We know nothing. I don't. Well, but, yeah. I, I know something, at least. <laughs> like, Consider we knew that you had, you were able to get, like, a some new form, thanks to Topo, from being... <laughs> From training to be a god of destruction, we know, and we know that Vegeta was training with Beerus. I was actually thinking that. Oh yeah, where's that symbol that showed up on Topo's chest? We don't see that on Vegeta. Maybe it's on his. It's embedded in his skin then, because we know that Topo was shirtless. Maybe if like. Okay, now I'm picturing if there is a master, whenever he goes into that, his armor shatters. Like, like it's like with oh, Master Ultra Instinct, like that, like his shirt or his armor just like rips off. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that would be cool if, like, any time he goes into it, it shatters his clothes. It shatters his armor. His shirt comes his off. Clothing. That's how you know he's trying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Any time in Dragon Ball you see that bare bone six-pack chest, you know the car You know it's getting real. Anything else you got to say about Ultra Ego before we head on? Uh, I'm just the next happy one? I predicted Vegeta would get some God of Destruction form. Well, I also thought that too. I, I before we called before we had. I a thought name, he was just gonna learn Hakai. I before I we, did not think Ultra Ego would be a thing. Before we called it Ultra Ego, I remember calling it Hakai Shin Vegeta. Everyone did. Yeah. Everyone did. Everyone did. I remember looking online and seeing like fan mangas that all called him Hakai Shin. Vegeta, or just... Or G.O.D. Vegeta. Yeah. Ultra Ego, though. Interesting name. 
Not the name I would have gone with. Neither would I have. But it's honestly, it's fitting for Vegeta. Hmm. You got the short man full of pride just going up to you, ultra ego. How tall is Vegeta? That'd be hilarious if I'm taller than Vegeta. I'm checking. Okay, All right. While you're, <laughs> while you're telling us you're number four, I'm going to check this. All right, this is where people are going to be pulling up the pitchforks. Super Saiyan. <laughs> That's right. My number five is Super Saiyan. <laughs> yeah, I know. Vegeta's 5'5". Five five. We're both taller than Vegeta. Wait, he's still taller than you, Nelly. <laughs> you know, like actually, five two, isn't he? Actually, also, you Nelly's taller than Frieza. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Piccolo is absolutely gigantic. Yeah, he's seven foot five. Good grief! That feels like Aiden's height. Feels like Matthew's height. Well, no, no, more Aiden than Matthew, but... Was it, like, King Piccolo, like... We're getting off track. Let yeah. me get back to talking about Super Saiyan. I like Super Saiyan. Don't get me wrong. It's just, it's been given to everyone. It's kind of lost its luster as time's gone on. It's still a good form. Oh, yeah. But, like... No one's going to argue and say that the fight between Goku and Frieza when it first gets shown off is a bad fight. Of course it's not. It's for long. Me, it's long. It's very I think it's long. actually a th if like in our time, it's three and a half hours. It is. 16 I, episodes long. I know they're going at the speed of light or some crap. <laughs> Film theory's got something on it. Yeah, I haven't checked it. I have. He just, he just says that Frieza made it up. Frieza lied about it being five minutes, and that's all it will take before the planet explodes. In reality, I think they're going at, like, the speed of light or something. Eh, it's, it could be. Who knows? But yeah, don't get me wrong. I like Super Saiyan. I think it is a good form. But it kind of loses its luster after a small child learns how to use After it by to... playing in his backyard with his mama. The kid can't even fly, and he manages to get super sick. And it kind of just cheapens it, because, like, everyone, like, the Goku goes, like, Super Saiyan after he loses his best friend. His best friend dies in front of him. Vegeta complains off screen, Ve and then he gets well, it. Well, he's just like, uh, D TFS did it best. It was funny. I want to be a super thing. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to. Every 14-year-old when they watch Dragon Ball. True. And then True. Trunk, Future Trunks got it. Uh, one of the best transformations sequences. In by the far, by far. Yeah. I, Goku I, and Trunks. Fun fact. Goku and Trunks are the only ones who actually... Get their transformation. Rest of them shown. are anime only. Yep. Everyone else just shows it off. They've already gotten and it. And everyone somehow. and and everyone else and then and then it's a lot of people will argue that the anime does the Goku Super Saiyan sequence better. Like I read the manga. It's, it's still good. It's two pages long. It's only two pages, and one of them's a full page spread. You want to talk about that? Let's talk about the fact that Super Saiyan God was in one page. That was the the entire ritual, which took up an entire episode of the anime. One page in the manga. Hmm. Still got more than Resurrection F. <laughs> I didn't even get anything in the manga. Uh, Except for a promotional uh, thing, but that wasn't actually part of the manga. I'm getting off topic. Yeah. Uh, I like Super Saiyan. But not enough to where it's higher up. I think it's been it's, cheapened. I, it's been cheapened. 
And really, I just feel like in a lot... Of, I feel like it's one of the but better be forms, fair, but to be in fair, my personal opinion, it's just cheap. And to be fair, we wouldn't have, like, half the forms on this list if we didn't have Super Saiyan. Technically, we wouldn't have half of the things on this list without Ozaru. True. We'll get to that in a moment. Yeah, I think that's all I've got to say for Super Saiyan. On to you. I think this is, what, number four? It's going to be my number four. Your number four, yeah. But yeah, my number four. Perfect Cell. Yes, that is a form. Well, yeah, all, uh, like, imperfect, Yeah, I know, yeah, some, pe some people might argue that it's not a form, though. It is, technically. It is. It it's, is. A, it's literally a transformation. It's a transformation through absorption. Not, not like... With most of the other Super Saiyan forms, where it's just breaking through. Cell does it better than Boo. Yeah, I have to. I I've got to say it. I've got to say it. Cell. I does mean, it I'll admit I like the Cell Saga more than most people do. What do you mean more than most people do? Everyone loves the Cell Saga. Everyone does, but like, unless your name's Kaiser Neko. We don't need to talk about him. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> I love Perfect Cell just as a design. He's extremely... Also, the first Dragon Ball character I ever saw was, I think, either Super Saiyan 3 Goku or Perfect Cell. Actually, I remember the first like bit of Dragon Ball anything I ever consumed. Was his theme? Not, not really. I watched... There's a YouTuber I watched called The Gaming Beaver. He played Dragon Ball Raging Blast 1 and he main Cell. Wait, what's the game where... Oh, I'm thinking of something different. And I will mention him. He was moment. fighting a guy, somewhat, and, like, this guy was, like, really good at the game. And, like, he mained Cell. And, hmm. he, and, and then he's just like, he said, like, what's cool with the dinosaurs? How about insect dude who sucks humans up through a straw? And it's just like... I'm just he like, got you there. Yeah, I'm just like... I remember thinking that Perfect Cell looked kind of weird for a second, because I was just like, semi-Perfect Cell looked kind of intimidating, <laughs> aside from the big lips. You're the only one who's ever said anything about semi-Perfect Cell being intimidating. Other than, like, anyone who watched Abridged. Yeah. Just because Takahata 101 did a good job. Yeah, he did. This is not a thing over the Abridged series. If you want that, we can do that some other time. Yeah. This is transformation, so back to Perfect Cell. Yeah, but just the entire thing with Perfect Cell trying to... Uh, about Semi-Perfect Cell trying his hardest to find 18, and him going to, like, such extents, he's, he's risking b killing her in order to find flush her out, while Krillin, 16, and her are hiding. More, Krillin is looking for her before Cell does, Vegeta and Trunks are on their way... And 16 and 18 are trying to lay low. Yeah. And then Cell... And then Cell, like... <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And then just, like, that entire pretty disturbing and kind of uncomfortable sequence where she, he's sucking 18 up. I'm the one making the unfunny jokes here. I'm the one I'm the one that makes the unfunny sex jokes, not you. I wasn't making the joke, I was laughing at it. <laughs> True But yeah, and that entire sequence where they're trying to stop eighteen and you know stop Stop eighteen, yeah. Eighteen's the villain. <laughs> yeah, stopping Cell from, you know, doing the the final suck and then and then they fail, and then there's that entire sequence in the anime where the earth is just shaking, and everyone's just like, there ain't no, that we're, we're done for. And then, once everything's done, you, like, imperfect cell looks so, just weirdly insectoid. His semi-perfect cell was wide, he was, he had an encoding physique, just because something is wide. I like them being... <laughs> Just because something is wide does not make it manly. Yeah. Yeah, you got a point there. And then you're like, what? how grotesque is Perfect Cell going to look like? And then the dust clears, 
and there is this uncomfortably handsome bug man at the center of it all with a face and a jawline gifted from Jesus Christ himself. I am not joking when I say this. Perfect Cell is a handsome motherfucker. I know he's not joking, and that's why it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> just like, just get like a picture of his face, like right here in the center. <laughs> just do that in editing. My name is Perfect Cell, and I'd like to say hello. <laughs> it just needs like, yeah, and it's like it looks good. And Cell is, in my opinion, the Dragon Ball villain that comes the closest to winning. Yeah. It was like, and I love oh, Final. Boo. Boo, I, kinda. Yeah. Zanasu, kinda. But that's the thing with. Moro, kinda. But like with Cell, Rip so Rinaldo. many points at Cell, he was so close to winning. Yeah. With, there was. Man just would not die. <laughs> yeah, it's like a similar. Got thing. his entire upper okay, body here's the thing, here's blown the thing, off. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. With with Frieza. And boo, there's a, the tension is a little less because you know that, in hindsight, Frieza could have ended that entire fight if he just went 100 percent from the start. Yes and no. And like, well, his 100 percent form actually becomes kind of a joke. Yeah, but it, like if if he started off and just ended it then and there, it would have been over. If he went fourth form immediately, yeah. Yeah, but then in, although his first form at that time was plenty. Yeah. But then it was he, a miracle they lived that long. It was a miracle they survived. They they beat the Saiyans. It was a miracle that Gohan didn't get damaged once. <laughs> and then there's everything with. Oh, okay, he gets hit a few times. And then with Boo, if all else failed, they could have just fused back into Super Vegito again. No, they couldn't have. Vegeta broke the earrings. He did. Yeah. Huh. Literally crushed it. And well, then Goku crushes his just because it's like, wait, why would you? Well, it, again. And then he's, but yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. And then there's everything with like you know. Boo could have Boo would have not attacked. This Mid isn't about Boo. This is about Set. Yeah. Of course you'd like that. Yeah. But yeah. Cell's a great villain. But then there's just everything with I love like final fights where it's just down to that last desperate push, where just that last ounce of energy that you have that you need to spend in order to beat Cell or beat. That Gohan had to beat Cell. And the imagery of the father-son Kamehameha. Speaking of Gohan... I'm not done. Okay, then not speaking of Go. Well, still speaking of Gohan, but not as much. Okay, but then there's just, like, seriously. If, if Vegeta didn't throw that tiny little pea shooter of a key <laughs> blast, Cell would have won. Well, I mean, everyone throws an attack. Yeah, but Vegeta's Except the last Goku. one. Goku. Yeah, but... Goku's dead. Yeah, but Vegeta, you know, throws the last one. Yeah. And that kind of, that actually gets Cell to flinch. Yeah, because he's like, wait a minute. That hit me in the back. That hit me in the back. And then he turned... Everyone who is still here... Hit me from the side. Has already hit me. And then he's just like, what the in the... The child is in front of me. Goku is dead. Who the... F oh. Oh, no. Literally, the sh ah! <laughs> Literally, and then, glorious musical number. And then... At least in the abridged version. Yes, which is the, which is good. And also cut out all the others helping. Yeah, they, they did do that. Yeah, it's only Vegeta. But it still means a lot that Vegeta was on to help. It means a lot that he said, I'm sorry. Vegeta. Yeah. The, there are two times in Z where he apologizes and they're both to Gohan. Huh. No, wait, he, he apologizes for Trunks. Well, either way. He apologizes for two Trunks out of the three before he blows himself up. Two out of the three times that he's apologized, they've been to go on. Yeah. <laughs> and then the last time is to his baby boy. My baby boy! I love that he Best knows. character when he's an adult. Like, people really like GT Vegeta. I was not talking about Vegeta. I was talking about Trunks there. Oh. Future, but but yeah, Vegeta's Perfect a Cell but. is a very striking silhouette, which in my opinion is a good thing. Very interesting color scheme. Yeah, 
I think it works though. I'm yeah, that's why that's why I'm saying it. In, where do the insect bits bits come from? <laughs> bits. Where yeah, the insect bits. But I guess that was just they didn't really know what to do. I mean it's kind of fly flew into the DNA strands. All right, who got into the <laughs> all right? Who got into the teleportation device with Jeff Goldblum? Jero just didn't do anything about it. Yeah, Jero is setting up the entire petri dish. A fly falls in it and dies, and he's just like, "Oh well." But yeah, Cell is. I like Cell. Not to mention, he's just he's unique. I love the Solar slash Perfect Kamehameha. Again, oh, yeah, he's that's the, right. He does have one called the Solar Kamehameha. And he's just, I think Perfect and Solar are the same thing. Eh, I think Perfect is actually supposed to be whenever he uses it against Gohan. Yeah, but it, he, that, it's still called the Solar. Is it? I think so. I think it's called that in Fighters. I'm not sure. I don't think it's called that in Jump Force. It's called Solar Kamehameha in Jump Force, I think. No, his final, his final one is called Perfect. He's got a base one that's solar, and then he's got his super attack, which is perfect. Anyways, we're not talking about Jump Force, but yeah. Well, we are, but... <laughs> but yeah, that's basically all I gotta say for uh, Perfect Cell. And now on to uh, your... Super Saiyan 2. Yep, I like Super Saiyan 2 more than I like Super Saiyan. Why? Because Gohan. Super Saiyan 2 was the culmination of one of the best character arcs I ever saw in Z. One of the best ones I've seen in any anime. It was the culmination of everything Gohan had been through. And its design is striking when you first see it. When you compare, like, Super Saiyan Gohan to Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, the difference is striking. At least when he's a teenager. But we'll get on to that in just a moment. When people think... When, of... when we first saw Super Saiyan 2, we had no clue that there was something beyond Super Saiyan. I only did when I saw it because of the fact that I didn't get into Dragon Ball Z until, like... Super was coming out. And by that time, I already knew that there were, like, a gajillion Super Saiyan There was, forms. I think at that point... I saw was... four before I saw the original. We'll get to four. We'll get to four. The only problem with Super Saiyan 2 at the moment is that for everyone that ain't Gohan, it's just Super Saiyan with lightning and slightly different hair. Which is weird, because, like... With with Goku, you can actually tell a bit more, because, like, there's more of his hair that's you, It's imp up. almost impossible to tell on Vegeta. Yeah, it's just, like, his hair separates a bit. Yeah. And with Trunks, with Trunks, it's actually... You're able to see a bit of a distinction. His hair is a lot more rigid in Super Saiyan 2. As opposed to... It being still slightly more together in regular Super Saiyan. But other than Gohan and Trunks, it is very difficult to tell. Heck, what is... You can't even tell with Kaba. You can't even tell with Cauliflaw. Screw Cauliflaw, by the way. She should not have gotten them. People just don't like Cauliflaw. Cauliflaw is a bad character. She, she just got... Actually, I'd say that she is the perfect example of how cheapened Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan 2 can now feel. By the fact that she literally got them... Tingly back. Tingly back. The dumbest <laughs> idea they've had for any Super Saiyan transformation. I would rather that she got it off screen. But yeah. Those are my thoughts on Super Saiyan 2. On to... Number... Three. Which for me is Super Saiyan 2. Yep, we're back to repeats. We're back to repeats. 
Anything you want to say? Um, not most of everything that you said applies to here, but I guess one thing I could add is the music that plays when Gohan goes Super Saiyan 2. Unmei no He is one of the good music. Is one good of the music. best tracks in the entire series. I might have it playing throughout this video. Just like his background music. Yeah. Why not? Which one? The FS version or the actual? Either. Okay. Maybe both. Depending on how long this video is. <laughs> it's gonna be a long one. It's actually like four o'clock. I'm gonna have to leave soon. Oh yeah. <laughs> but um but yeah, and also another thing is just how dark when you think about Super Saiyan 2 and the cat and what caused it, it's kind of messed up. Because Gohan's a child. He's not even thirteen, he's like eleven. <laughs> And yet he's being forced into a death match with the fate of the world in the balance. And his own dad is banking on him being beaten so hard that he snaps. Man towards 16. Ripping pepperonis. He did not deserve it. He did not deserve it. <laughs> he did not deserve what he got. Just absolutely. Battle. Yeah, I think so. There's not really anything else that I can really think of. But All yeah. Alright, do we want to go to your next on your number three, or do we want to have me do my number three? Super Saiyan 2 is my number three. Oh, wait, that's right. We're Super on Saiyan... number two now. I think. I'm on number three. Super Saiyan 4 was... Super... Super Saiyan 2 was my number four. And then it You're was at number, your three, number three. I'm You're on at... number three. Right. Yeah. Ultra Instinct. FBI is going to be knocking down the store any minute now. That's right. I mean, most people are a lot more receptive to Ultra Instinct now. It's mostly going to be the Dragon Ball Super Critics. I would say the manga definitely helped. But to be honest, Ultra Instinct is one is by far one of the best forms to come out. In modern day of Dragon Ball. It's interesting how it comes around as well. Super Saiyan, Anger. Super Saiyan 2, Anger. Super Saiyan 3, Death? I think it was just the, 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 the well of energy that he had. That Super Saiyan him. 4, Monkey. Super I Saiyan more God. more sorrow. It was more just like... Ritual. Super Saiyan Blue... Weiss, Ultra Instinct, needed a catalyst. We first see a sign of Ultra Instinct when Goku first fights Beerus, and his body stops him on its own. Something that we've never seen Goku do before. Flash forward to the Tournament of Power. Goku is fighting Jiren. These two are already considered to be some of the strongest fighters. And Goku has gone through every form in his arsenal. From including Blue Kaioken times 20. He decides to resort to the thing that killed Kid Buu. The thing that almost defeated Frieza. The spirit bomb. Something we hadn't seen him use in quite some time. And not since Boo. We got help from Beerus. The Kais. The entire Universe 17 except for Vegeta. Even Frieza put in some work. To give energy to Goku. Goku throws the spirit bomb. Jiren catches it and pushes it back. And it hits Goku. The spirit bomb becomes unstable and collapses in on itself, becoming essentially a black hole. And Goku's gone. Because of the fact it was his own attack, Jiren will not be eliminated. Beerus 
calls out Goku's name one last time. And then there's a flash of light. And everyone realizes what this means. It's not over yet. As Goku reappears, he seems different. He seems calmer. His eyes, now a shade of silver. A spatial and ominous aura around his persona. And when Jiren goes for an attack, it misses. And Goku... just moves in a blink of an eye. And then we get one of the best fights in Dragon Ball. Honestly, probably the one of the best fights since Goku versus Vegeta. And the thing is, there's still some fights beyond this one that are good. We get three total fights with Ultra Instinct. Goku versus Jiren. Goku versus Kefla. Also, we don't want to talk thing, about that. <laughs> also, quick thing about Kefla, uh that finisher is amazing. Okay, yeah, I'll 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 I'll, I'll agree on you, with you on that one. And then we get Goku versus Jiren again, where Goku taps back into it somehow, falling out of consciousness and into Ultra Instinct. But it's not enough. A bunch of energy starts coming down on him, where he is just on this small platform that is the only thing and keeping him like from elimination. it looks like a galaxy of light. I was just getting to that. And the, remember how in Fusion Reborn, whenever Gogeta becomes Super Gogeta? Oh, yeah. And, like, there's that whole, like, galaxy spiraling around before it cuts to him going Super Saiyan. Yeah. It's like that. Like, that's... Like, Super Gogeta and Ultra Instinct, when that happened, they were, like, arguably the strongest character ever. I am going to say something that is going to shock people, including him. I like Mastered Ultra Instinct. I think it fits. I think the silver is fine. Now, do I think that Mastered Ultra Instinct is the better looking form between it and the base one? No. I think the more simplistic design was better. However... I still think, overall, Mastered Ultra Instinct is still a good form. And, yeah, I'm putting both of them together instead of saying that they're a split thing. Because it's like if I was to say that Super Saiyan it's like saying and that Final Full form Power for... Super Saiyan it's are like, completely different. It's like saying that Final Form Frieza and 100% Full Power Frieza are the same. Are different. They're not. Yeah. F F full Power Frieza is just Frieza going level full power. Yeah. And the thing is, I like how... I especially like how Ultra Instinct is used in the manga. And how it comes around. But I won't get into that. We already have enough manga spoilers. However... This video's long enough as it is. The way Ultra Instinct moves. The aura it gives off. The sheer power behind it. In the way Goku presents himself in it. While this form is not on the top of the list, it is very close to the other two. That's all I have to say. Moving on to number two. And I, on the other hand, am going to say that Super Saiyan Original is my number two. And I agree, it was cheapened. But I think that Goten and Cauliflood didn't do enough damage to it for me personally to dislike it as much as he does. I don't dislike Super Saiyan. I just you like, like it less. Cheap. You dislike it more than me. Yes. So I'd say my top five to like top five to top one that entire list they're all pretty close to each other. But Super Saiyan one. We, this first comes up when Goku easily takes out Raccoon with almost no effort. 
who had beaten Vegeta, Krillin, and Gohan into a bloody pace. Oh yeah, Gohan did get beaten up badly in yeah, that. He got his freaking neck snapped. Moro still does worse to him than Super. Yeah. He breaks his jaw. Mm-hmm. And... Spoilers. Yeah, like I said, this, these are manga spoilers. It's a minor spoiler, but still. Back to Super Saiyan. But yeah. And then Vegeta starts to gammer, he starts going on about how... He starts talking about how Kakarot might actually fulfill the legend. And throughout this entire thing, we're like, what legend is this? And Vegeta says that he is a Super Saiyan, and Freeze is just like, whatever. And then just bullies him like your fifth grade bully whatever. does to you on the You're playground. just a stupid monkey. And then Frieza bullies Vegeta like your fifth grade bully did for your lunch money. My fifth grade bully didn't exist. Shut up. You want to talk about my kindergarten bully? <laughs> we'll talk about that later. I kind of got to go soon. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> and then... Goku then has to square up against Frieza after Vegeta is shot through the chest. And this fight is long, it is arduous, it is desperate. Goku is having to push himself further than he's ever had before. Further than he had to when fighting Vegeta. Kaioken times 20. And it's just, it's still, it's not enough. Frieza is toying with Goku like a cat with his food. And Frieza's a lot like a cat. Very petty. Yeah. And and like Goku is just, he just can't do a thing. And it is by the absolute skin of his teeth that he can put together a spirit bomb as powerful as he did. And it still wasn't enough. And Frieza comes back, this haunting track begins. And this wicked smile of someone who's on the verge of losing their mind comes in. He hadn't lost his mind. Well, no, he hadn't. Yet. Which, that does say something about Frieza. <laughs> that man's mental fortitude is nuts. And he's just like, he, he seemingly murders Piccolo. And you're like, oh crap, this is a problem. Because like, you think Piccolo's dead. And, like, Piccolo, at this point, was a character that could not die. Piccolo took on second form Frieza. So the fact that he almost died here... Yeah, that says something. <laughs> and then... And then... Goku sees his best friend die right in front of him. That was for my tail. <laughs> and he... Breaks. Harder than he did when Krillin, the first time Krillin died. And if any time, this time it's worse because he doesn't realize that Krillin could come back. He thought this time it was permanent. There was no do-over. Well. Well, I mean, the Elder was dead at that point. Oh, wait. Well, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. and if, if Piccolo died, then Kami would have disappeared, and then they'd have no Dragon Balls, and they couldn't do anything. And they were actually really, everything. Everything done was for nothing. Yeah, like Gohan even like like even in DBZA, Gohan Goku says to Gohan, "If Piccolo dies, this entire thing was for nothing." Yeah. And again, at this point, Piccolo just could not die. So Goku then just starts curb stomping Frieza, like the hardest we've seen a character get curb stomp up to this point. And this is the first time we've seen Goku this g absolutely angry. And it's kind of disturbing. I just, thought you were going to say this was the first time we saw him this absolutely jacked. <laughs> well, still. Oh my god, you could grind me, Tom. Now. I was going to make that joke. <laughs> nice. But yeah, and literally at this point, and it glorifies Super Saiyan, and it makes it feel like it's like this a kid with his new toy. And it's absolutely a brutal carp song. And even one Frieza powers up. It still is technically in the manga. In the anime, it's more even. Yeah, yeah. I read the manga, so. Yeah, and uh, that's that. Number one. Not for me. Well, yeah, your number. You're you just number. want. You just don't want me to say my number one. Yeah. 
Because it's because gonna be it's your number two is my number one. My number two. The first ever Super Saiyan form I ever saw. Super Saiyan 4. The closest thing to a Saiyan's heritage since the Ozuru. Honestly, I would say it's even closer to Saiyan heritage than Super Saiyan. Saiyans are monkey men from space. So, when Super Saiyan 4 was being made, they decided to take it back to its roots. Where Goku ends up becoming more primal. Becomes, albeit, more like a furry. I will say that. Doesn't make this doesn't make the form any less cool. In fact, I will say, the nice clash of colors, red fur throughout most of him, the tail returning, wild black hair like nothing we have ever seen before. Couple that with the fact that... With yellow sweatpants. Yes. With yellow sweatpants. Nice. Thank you, GT. I hate it. Because 90s. And again, look at this room. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of yellow. Anyways. The fact that when Goku transforms, this is striking in GT. He has been... Nothing is quite like Super He's Saiyan been War. destroyed by a parasite who has taken over... Who, let's be honest, is, is his best friend, other than Krillin. Vegeta is probably his closest friend. Like Vegeta's closest... probably the closest thing he has to a brother. Poor Raditz. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Raditz. Thanks, Masako, you made Raditz popular. And then Dragon Ball Heroes gave him Super Saiyan 3. <laughs> he also gave Nappa Super Saiyan 3. But Super Saiyan 4 comes about after Baby Vegeta has destroyed Super Saiyan 3. Yes, there was a reason for me to bring up Super Saiyan 3. Goku is lying in a bloody pulp. And he looks up to the earth. Which is a little weird, given what comes next. But I'm going to let it slide. It's cool. Goku reminisces on his old home. And then suddenly, he begins to change. It's kind of similar to the Super Saiyan transformation he undergoes when he gets beaten up by Cooler. Yeah. He begins to turn into an Ozuru. But not just any Ozuru. The Golden Ozuru. The original Super Saiyan. From what we saw in Z. From the flashbacks and the silhouette of a gold, of a black silhouetted Ozuru with a golden with a golden outline. And Which is where that comes from. His granddaughter flies up to him. He's losing control. He can't handle this form. And she calms him down by showing him a picture of her with him when she was just a little kid. And he begins to change into Super Saiyan 4. Unpopular opinion, Super Saiyan 4's transformation, to me, is at the very least on par with the original Super Saiyan transformation. Or the Super Saiyan 2 transformation Gohan undergoes after the death of 16. Yeah. I, I'll be on that hill with you, dude. I like that sequence, because it's just like... Like, like I said, the catalyst for the emotional catalyst for Super Saiyan 4 was sorrow. Goku had basically given up. His planet was gonna go away. It does Everyone go. he knew was under the control of 
this monster be close who to the, the only reason why they were there was because of his own people which massacred the parasite that was about to reduce the earth to ashes to space dust and you want to know what makes super saiyan 4 even more interesting it's strong i'll say that but it shows up less than a fusion yeah Super Saiyan 4 is so strong that they were that it has been resorted to less than fusion in order to beat a villain. Because they don't always go full power. They'll build up to it. What are you doing? It's like a little... Oh. They build up to that stuff. So fusion gets seen more than Super Saiyan 4. Which, for a, such a long time, was at the top of the power of like the power charts. Fun little bit of trivia here: um, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta was the strongest character in Dragon Ball for 17 years. Yep, almost two whole decades. That guy was at the top, and the only reason why he wasn't able to beat. Omega Shenron was because the time limit ran out. Yeah. Let's be honest, if Gogeta didn't pull his punches at some time and he didn't do the whole bluff Kamehameha thing... He would have won. He would have won. It would have been over. He literally spams Big Bang Kamehameha twice and that destroys Omega Shenron. And then he pulls the bluff thing and then that's just... But he he only Gogeta only toys with his opponents when he can get away with it. But yeah. Super Saiyan 4 Goku looks insane. Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta looks insane. Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta is popular Ooh. for a reason. And then there's Super Saiyan 4 Vegito and Dragon Ball Heroes. Still looks really good. In fact, I'd say Zeno Goku probably is the best Super Saiyan 4. Yeah, I like Gogeta more. Eh, I, th I I really like the design of, Su of Zeno Goku. Mm -hmm. And then add I mean, Super Saiyan 4 on top of that. Because, like, the outfit fits with the design of Super Saiyan 4. He's got the black and red on him a lot. So, yeah. I think that's all I got to say about Super Saiyan 4. Since it's your number one, you got anything to add? Um, not much. Like I said, it, the Super Saiyan 4 transformation... Reminds me of the. Reminds me of the transfer, Super Saiyan transformation Goku undergoes after Earth is about to be destroyed by Cooler. And he's just like. He's just looking up, and he's. Just, or more like. More accurately at the little birdie. And he's just like. This. Ever, everything is about to be destroyed. And he's just like. I just can't do this. And he's. I mean, he just goes. But I love the way Super Saiyan 4 appears, and it's so radically different to every single form that and that just makes it work for me. And I hope to God, someday, Super Saiyan 4 will appear in something that is not GT or Heroes. Fair enough. Now for your number one. Now if you excuse me, I'm going to go hide in our bunker. You know what? I feel like I need to stand for this. Uh, uh, um, uh, hey, hey. Good luck. <sighs> this is gonna make a lot of people mad. Super Saiyan Blue is my favorite transformation in all of Dragon Ball. A lot of people dislike it. We don't get to see the first transformation. It's blue in color. Which Toriyama himself said that blue is not a good color for a form. Because it doesn't look strong. Throwing something aside. 
I love Super Saiyan Blue as a form. It's a good transformation in my opinion. Sure, they could have shown off the first transformation. They could have shown when they first learned the form. I will not say that that's not a problem. But Super Saiyan... Super Saiyan Blue is just something else. And that's supposed to be the point. It's not Super Saiyan. It is the Super Saiyan equivalent of God Key. It is a Super Saiyan God who has ascended to the level of Super Saiyan. So it's not gonna look normal. And I think that's why they went with the blue color. Because it's not something you'd expect. But Super Saiyan Blue also doesn't act like Super Saiyan. Super Saiyan comes from a feeling of rage, of anger. Super Saiyan Blue is calm and ascended. It's beyond that. It's the only Super Saiyan form that outside of the other world can handle Kaioken. Something that puts severe strain on the body. Except for Super Saiyan 4, but that's Heroes exclusive. Plus, I also like blue as a color. Blue's my favorite color. I mean, I've got a lot of blue stuff. Like, my bed is blue. <laughs> for the most part, at least. It's got a bit of red. But yeah, Super Saiyan Blue is different. It's more mystic, I guess you could say. And there's just something about it. A lot of people don't like it, because the blue color doesn't look like it's that strong. And they didn't show it in a good way. Let's be honest, Resurrection F was a big problem with that. But to me, I like Super Saiyan Blue, because it's a blue color. And I also feel like there's something more to it than just what people normally say of it. It feels more godly to me. Sure, you could also say Super Saiyan God itself is very godly. I will not deny that. Literally, God is in the name. But yeah. I like Super Saiyan Blue. It is my favorite form. You will disagree with me. I know you will. So what? Everyone's got their opinions. I thought you were going hiding. I did. <laughs> You're back. Yes. I to mean, be no. fair, I don't think blue looks awful. I just, yeah, mm -hmm. it's just not something I care about. I like it a lot more than most people. Most people wouldn't even put it in their top tens, let alone their number one. Let me put my hat back on since we're now ready for this. Alright, now that we've gone through both of our personals, we've also come up with a balanced one. Yeah. So at number 10, Final, Final form, form Cooler. cooler. <laughs> number 9, Rage. Number 8 was... Raffle. Number 7? That was gonna be Rosé. Yep. Number 6, Blue. Number 5, God. God. Number four is Ultra Ego. Number three is Super Saiyan 2. Number two was Super Saiyan. Yeah. And number one, Super, Super Saiyan, Saiyan 4. 4. This list looks a little more like mine than it does yours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we had a lot of the same a lot ones of our stuff, on there. A lot of our similar ones were in similar spots, so there isn't really much that we can do there. It's the ones that... Yeah. Blue averages out... For me, blue would be 13, so I think that would average out about 6. Yeah, about... Just about. Yeah. 
if if it was 14, we would put it at 7. Yep. But, yeah, that's that's everything. That's everything from this collaboration. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you liked this one and want to see me do more collaborations, you won't have to wait. There should be more people showing up here and there. And maybe I'll show up on some other people's channels. But until the next one, I'll see you guys next time. You got anything to say? Bye-bye! Bye. -bye. Bye.